Okay, we're back with our second lecture, and you can see how creative I was. The first one was before first contact, this one's after first contact. I'll try to be more creative in the future for you. All right, what we're looking at is what happens when Europeans first get to North America and South America. And you gotta talk about these early explorations. Your first European explorations are gonna be along the coast of West Africa. They're gonna be mostly done by the Portuguese. And the Portuguese, they're gonna search for African goods, they're gonna look for gold, and they're gonna look for slaves. Now, in exchange for buying slaves from African people, the African leaders, they receive European manufactured goods. And in some cases, these African leaders really begin to depend on European goods and they start to sell large numbers of people to the Portuguese. The Portuguese are going to gain control of the gold trade. The Portuguese are going to gain control of the slave trade. And believe it or not, Portugal at one point in time was both the richest and most powerful country in the world. Today, most people don't know where Portugal is on a map. Now, European slavery is going to turn traditional African slavery into a big, big business. Uh, it's important to know that there was already African slavery, but it was very different from European slavery. Usually, if you were a slave in an African culture, you were the prisoner of war, you were a debtor, or you were actually given by whoever your leader was to another leader for maybe a peace offering. Um, in African slavery, you had legal protections, you were treated as a family member in some cases, and there was very often a way to gain your freedom. Uh, you weren't a slave because of your race, you were a slave because of something happening to you. Now, European slavery, on the other hand, as we know, is based on race. Um, it is perpetual. Um, people lose their humanity and become more like cattle almost. And there's lots of manpower involved in European slavery. It becomes almost like a conveyor belt business. Now, there are some African kings, especially in the Congo region, they're going to use this European slave trade to increase their power and wealth. And you get some very powerful kings in Western and Central Africa as a result. Now, moving on from there, you got to talk about the Spanish explorers. Uh, first, the Columbus didn't discover America. I hope you know that. And if you didn't, I'm sorry to break your heart. Uh, Columbus was actually one of the last explorers to get here. And I'm He's just the most famous. And Columbus, he never realized he he was in North America until his death. He thought he was off the coast of China. And he was really bad for exploiting the people of the Caribbean. There was lots of death, lots of destruction as a result of Columbus coming to, to the Caribbean. Uh, there is a reading, I think I have you reading it for this class. If not, I suggest you, you look it up. It's called The Destruction of the Indies by a guy named De La Casas. And he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He tells you exactly what happened when the Spanish come to the Caribbean islands. You also have the conquistadors, and they're coming for gold and silver and glory. Uh, and you got two guys mainly I want you to know. You got Hernan Cortez. Um, he is going to go to central Mexico. He's going to meet the great Aztec leader Montezuma. Cortez is going to say, hey, we're friends. Montezuma is going to think that the Spanish are gods. It's a little mixed in the translation and Cortez is going to defeat the Aztecs in 1519. Now he's not going to find a whole lot of gold but Mexico is going to become a very important Spanish colony. You have another guy named Francisco Pizarro. Uh, he's going to go to South America. He's going to get there in 1531 right after the Inca finished the Civil War. And by 1536, Pizarro is going to claim the Inca Empire for the Spanish. If you look at a map, the Inca Empire went all the way from modern-day Colombia down into Chile. It was uh, the entire Andes. Why did he do this? He heard that there were large amounts of silver, and it turns out he was right. There were huge silver mines that were being run by the Inca, and... All of this gold and all this silver is going to flow from the North and South American continent and into Europe and just completely destroy the economy of Spain. Um, I talk about that more in world history. I don't really have time to do it for U.S. history, but uh, prices go up. The value of currency goes down, and it's just it's horrible for Spain. They think they're getting so much money, but they lose a lot. 
Now, one thing Spain does do is they set up permanent settlements in North and South America, and they set up missionaries. Uh, most of the settlers to the Spanish settlements are male. They're there to make money. You also have Spanish missionaries who are going to come in and try and destroy the native customs, destroy the native religions, and convert everybody to Catholicism. There are also some northern traders. Um, I'm not going to talk about the English yet because that's what going to be most of what the first couple weeks are about. So I'm going to look at the French, the Dutch, and the Swedish. And the French, the Dutch, the Swedes, they primarily want to trade furs, they want to get fish, and they want to get money. There are going to be some large settlements. Uh, Quebec in Canada, Montreal in Canada, St. Louis here in the United States, New Orleans here in the United States. These are some of the better known settlements. Uh, one that you may not realize, New York was originally New Amsterdam, and that was a Dutch colony. And then you find a lot of Swedish populations um, as well in um, Canada. Now these Northern Europeans are going to trade cloth and they're going to trade metal items for local furs. And then there are some of these native groups that are going to become so dependent on European help that they lose their ability to hunt and gather and they actually have to have European intervention. Now the Jesuits who were Catholic missionaries, I always refer to them as the stormtroopers of Catholicism. They come in and they infiltrate the local populations, live with them, teach them how to read, write, and then teach them how to forget their native religions and turn to Catholicism. Now the Jesuits, they are also going to bring with them European diseases, the most famous of which is smallpox. And European diseases in the New World have somewhere around a 90% death rate. Nine out of every 10 natives die of a European disease. Now that brings us to the Colombian Exchange. Uh, this is an important thing to talk about. And there's an actual definition. It's the transfer of both intentional and unintentional exchange of biological materials between Europe and the Americas. Now the first one, foods. Potatoes came from South America. They're one of the biggest foods in the world now. Corn. Corn is seen as kind of a miracle drug. For each one kernel of corn that you plant, you get about 70 kernels of corn back. Corn becomes kind of what fills up the stomachs of Europeans. Then you get tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes are very important in Italian food. If you like pizza, ketchup, any of that, tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes were from the New World, and when they were brought to Europe, nobody had seen them before. Tomatoes are called pomodoros, golden apples. Potatoes, uh, pomme de terre, or dirt apples. Because that's the closest thing that Europe had, an apple to a potato or an apple to a tomato. Another really interesting story about a potato. When they first came to Europe, Europeans thought that potatoes were the devil's food because a potato is not mentioned in the Bible. Another important thing is sugar. Sugar is discovered in the New World at the same time as honeybee populations start to decline in Europe. And it's discovered that you can grow sugar, you can make a lot of money out of sugar, and these high profits mean the creation of large plantations. Large plantations mean a large number of slaves. Drinks, if you drink tea. Tea came from China and India by way of France into South America. Coffee came from the Arabian Peninsula by way of France into South America and chocolate came from South and Central America to Europe where it's, it was originally a drink and now it's used for all sorts of things. Uh, slaves are exchanged. Slaves are brought from Africa to the Caribbean and from Africa to South America, Central America and North America. And then you also have diseases. Smallpox, influenza, measles, mumps, rubella, all of those are brought from Europe into the Americas. And once again, they have about a 90% death rate. Uh, there is one disease that goes back to Europe, and that is syphilis. Uh, now, one last thing I didn't put it on here, but um, if you are a fan of barbecue, 
Barbecue was actually a Caribbean cooking style from Hispaniola, which is today Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And Spanish explorers discover this idea of grilling meat over a fire and bring it back to Europe. And now barbecue is everywhere in the South. All right, one last thing for you, uh, just to ensure that you are going to watch these. I'm going to give you a very simple and easy quiz at the end of each week. This is in addition to the other quizzes. And that is a, what I like to call a secret word quiz. So that there's going to be a secret word. And I'm going to stop the lecture. And I'm going to say, this is your secret word. And then you will answer whatever that secret word is on a quiz due every Sunday night along with the rest of your work. For this week, there's only one word because I'm putting up both videos at once. And that one word is going to be firework. Since yesterday was Memorial Day, a lot of people probably set off fireworks. This week's secret word is firework. All right, until next week, if you have any questions, email me, tech, uh, go to Discord, message me in blackboard whatever you need to do to get in touch with me and we'll get through this together until next time we'll see you soon